Good afternoon, friends. This is your uh, lecture for this week on uh, the Gospel of St. Mark. Uh, first, we're going to begin a little bit in reference to the Synoptic Gospels. Synoptic Gospels, which I hope you've read in Ehrman, uh, refer to the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They are referred to as the Synoptic Gospels because they have um, pretty much a, a synopsis of the same stories in each one. So there are pieces and components that you would find in Matthew, that you'd find in Mark, that you'd find in Luke. You could not exactly word for word because they, they tell different stories or different lengths. They, they, they have different additions and subtractions. But you could literally kind of follow the same story along in all three stories. Um, some are, are longer, some are shorter, uh, some are different. Uh, but the synopticness of them, the sense that they are all interrelated and interconnected, is what gives them those names. Uh, the Gospel of St. John, which is the fourth gospel in the in the first uh, set of uh, texts for the New Testament, um, is a bit different, has a different uh, style of writing, uh, has a different... Um, is a bit of a different genre and definitely doesn't follow that, that, that synoptic uh, list. So uh, I, I think it's important to start off in that, in that uh, format. Um, when we talk about the gospels and we talk about uh, their order, right? We've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, they are in that order for a, cano a canonical reason. And we can talk about that another time. Uh, but the indicate the importance of the, of the gospels are that they are all for different types of readers. Um, so the gospel of St. Matthew is written for one kind of reader and the gospel of St. Mark is written for another kind of reader. The gospel of St. Luke is written for one kind of reader and a, the gospel of St. John is written for another reader. So it's not it's just the same stories over and over that we're talking about here. We're trying to, I'm trying to help you understand the idea that they're written for different people in different places in different ways in different times to express a, a, a different um, answer result. Uh, the, the, uh, the deliverer of that information is trying to convey a different message to a different audience. Um, so it would kind of be similar to um, if you will, telling a story, um, maybe a, a text that you are familiar with or that would maybe be famous or something like that, uh, that, that becomes like a movie. Um, so it tells a, a similar story, but different and, and, and is annotated or expressed in a different manner because it's a movie or even if it's a graphic novel. Uh, they are uh, the same stories or they are very similar stories. Uh, however, they are delivered in different medium uh, so that the audience, because the audience is different, but to try to convey the same message or a very similar message. Uh, in that matter, uh, there, the universal um, message for all of the Gospels is that um, this person, Jesus, is the Son of God or Son of Man, right? And when we read about that in Ehrman, um, and you know, and has this this, this sense of, of of being someone who uh, does miracles, uh, preaches, teaches, uh, has a direct connection to God, um, is is uh, crucified. Um, and he's raised from the dead in, in some kind of resurrection fashion. Um, so they all have these different components to them uh, that they uh, they all have these similar components, but they are expressed in in, in different ways. And so um, we look at those those three um, um, texts, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and we refer to them, like I said, as the synoptic gospels. And then you look on Ehrman, on page 245, uh, where uh, we, we, we read that the Matthew is probably one of the, the, the original text or the originating text of these uh, three Gospels. And so uh, parts of Mark are, are found in, obviously, Mark, but also in Matthew and Luke. And then they talk about this Q um, source. And so um, Q is, is just a designation, right? Quell. And and what, what it is is that this, this additional source, which nobody really is uh, completely sure of, also finds itself in these other uh, texts, and so this is um, this is the reason why uh, Mark is considered like this original text, this this, this foundational text for all of them, uh, because um, it's the it is the one where the others seem to have drawn uh, their primary stories, um, their the. the um, the bones, if you will, uh, by which the other stories are built on, all seem to come from uh, from Mark. 
Um, and so that's important to keep in mind uh, when we look at these stories, when we look at these, this narrative. Uh, another item that I think is valuably important when we discuss and describe uh, Mark is the fact that um, it's the briefest, right? It's, it, it's the shortest of, of the four uh, Gospels and obviously the shortest of the three synoptics. Uh, they all uh, draw from the, the same uh, source. But also it is Mark where it, it, the very first um, words of Mark, the very, in the very first chapter, we, we read these words. If we were to go to God, uh, the, the, the Gospel of St. Uh, Mark, chapter 1, verse 1, it says, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So good news is the, is the translation to gospel, right? And I think we talked about gospel being the, the heralding, uh, a trumpet that sounds, that, that initiates or presents uh, what is going to be said. And the language, the, the idea of the word gospel uh, comes is, is taken from Roman rule. Uh, so when the Romans would, would arrive in a city, a uh, herald would you know, would announce, right, would, would announce the good news, the gospel, the Eula Julian, they would say, hey, you are now under the, the, the control and the power of Rome and uh, welcome to the Roman nation. Uh, this was uh, Pax Romano, the peace of Rome, and it came at the edge of the sword. And so uh, you have two options. You can fight us and be destroyed, or you can just join the Roman team and um, pay taxes. Um, the key thing here is that even if you were destroyed, whatever was left, they have to pay taxes too. So folks would generally say, ah, you know what? I'd rather probably not be completely destroyed by the Roman army, by the centurions, probably at that time the most world-class military on the planet. Uh, we'll just go along with the quote unquote good news. Uh, so uh, the writers of the gospels, the writers, uh, you know, of, uh, from this New Testament, the script, they write these gospels. Um, I don't want to say stealing, but certainly drawing some of that same language because they're trying to draw both parallels and conflicts between the two. So uh, Pax Romano comes. This is peace at the end of the sword, and this is peace. Uh, that comes through this 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 message of of miracles of this message of a holy man this message of the, the son of God that comes uh, not to harm you but to help you uh, a, a, a God that uh, recognizes the poor uh, serves them uh, provides them an, a, a sense of equity equality um, and and an opportunity for eternal life in the kingdom of heaven, according to uh, the scripture and according to that faith story for, for the Christian faith. So we have all these kind of things pull, pulled together right away. Um, I think it's important to know that while the, uh, the gospels are at the beginning of the New Testament, and they are followed by um, the book of Acts, which is uh, an, a continuation of the gospel of St. Luke, and then the letters and then the book of Revelation. Um, I think it's important to know that um, when it comes to written, the written word, the recording, the quote unquote canon, right? The, the, the books that kind of get in or the letters that kind of get into the New Testament, um, the letters, which are in Greek are referred to as epistles, uh, these letters are written first. So we're saying that, um, you know, um, if, if we find, uh, if we follow a chronology, if you will, of the Christian faith of Jesus's birth, right? He's born on the year zero, the, the common era. Or, um, you know, uh, and then he lives until somewhere around 33, 34. Uh, he's crucified. He resurrects. So um, the, the, the epistles or the letters then seem to show up from this guy, Paul, and Paul's friends and back and forth between these different uh, churches in these different cities. Um, somewhere in like the 45, 60 range, right, uh, the year you know, 45 years. And then we start to see these Gospels written after. So the Gospels are written, you know, 75 through late 90s. Uh, so I, I, we, I, and I've said this to you before, um, we have to consider why they are written after. You know, why is it necessary that um, the Gospels, that which we'll, we'll talk about, are, are these representations, not exactly biographical, not exactly historical, but um, uh, a, um, a capturing, if you will, of the um, of the the, um, 
the works, uh, the the miracles, the preachings, the teachings, uh, the interactions and conversations of Jesus. Why do they get recorded after and not before uh, the letters? Uh, they, they come from uh, Paul. And so Paul is, is supposed to be this, this converted person or in, in the other books who are like, or who are Christians who then go out and have these interactions with the churches. And so there's two pieces to this. There's two possibilities. The first is that, um, the gospels were in circulation, but they were only in circulation by word of mouth, which would have been very common, especially for um, for Jewish people, uh, for the most part, uh, outside the Torah, uh, which was, you know, and these big scrolls. A lot of this was like word of mouth. A lot of it was conversation, which every religion or every kind of story kind of be, uh, starts out and then eventually becomes some kind of uh, recorded or written document. So uh, the first piece is, yes, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. Um, uh, they, everybody knew what the gospel was. It just wasn't written down. A second idea, and this is one that I, I, I've kind of played with myself, is the fact that there were uh, teachings within the uh, the epistles, within the letters, within the, the, the these the, these different components uh, of the New Testament that were probably that may very well be in conflict with. Um, with the actual gospel, and therefore, uh, the whoever was who wrote the gospels thought it was incredibly important to to have this straight, to have these these experiences, or uh, have these these writings um, somewhere, so that people be, became aware of them, so that they could look at these letters um, and, and and kind of figure this out. And there, you have to understand that in no way, shape, or form they think that you know Christianity, uh, which would be the result of these writings you know, would be this gigantic thing that, that it is today, uh, a worldwide religion um, and, and on every continent. I, I, they weren't even aware that there were all these other places and continents on the planet. Uh, so certainly, you know, this is not exactly where they're coming from, but they wanted to set the record straight and they thought it was incredibly important to set the record straight and they set the record straight by, um, by, by recording the gospel. So the, this is kind of like a little bit of background for you. So the gospel of St. Mark, uh, gospel of St. Mark, like I, I said, is the briefest of all the gospels. Um, it is often referred to as a clatter of bones. Um, it certainly doesn't go, go in all kinds of different directions and, 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 and focus on different kinds of information. The gospel of St. Um, Mark uh, has a, a primary purpose. And the primary purpose of, this, of, of the gospel of St. Mark is to, um, uh, is to uncover or at least demonstrate or at least invite people to understand uh, this idea of an unknown son of God, this mysterious son of God who is um, like hiding in plain sight, if you will. Uh, so um, the, 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 the components that, that this is um, represented in or recognized in are number one, uh, the parables. So he's, so Jesus is recorded in Mark as telling all these stories and they are for those who have ears to hear, eyes to see. They are for those who understand, those who um, uh, are, are, are called into salvation. So there is a, a, a seenness if you will, I'm not sure that's a word, and a hiddenness that's associated with um, with the teachings of Jesus. And so the gospel of St. Mark is written for those to see and believe, right? So, and, and, and for those to be unseen, they can remain ignorant. So the first piece to this is the sense that it's all in parables, it's all in stories. And so parables are stories where you think you know the answer, you see it kind of coming, and all of a sudden it's kind of like a surprise ending. And also you walk away thinking different things every time you read it. And so that the, the goal of the gospel is um, and the goal of parables is, is, is deep inner work for you as a human being and deep inner work of your experience in this religious life. And so these narratives of parables do just that. Um, it's a seen and unseen. It's like the wind. You can feel it, but you can't, you know, see it. It's not something that you can, you know, verbally, uh, visibly watch go by. You know, I can hear the sound. I can notice the grass is moving. I can see a leaf that's blown, <coughs> excuse me, but you don't actually see the wind. So unseen guy, but, but he hides in plain sight. The second piece to that is that Jesus throughout the, um, throughout the gospel reminds people again, saying, don't tell anybody. Don't tell me what I did. Don't tell anybody what I said. Uh, he, he continues to, to hide himself 
in these matters. So he'll there'll be a miracle where he um, he will uh, heal somebody. But he says, "Don't tell anybody who did this to you." And so again, this is part of this this underlying um, mystery that he is this unseen Lord. Uh, or son of God, or when we talk about son of man, son of God. And so, it, it, but the story goes through all the same components. Um, you know, he is the Messiah, you know, he, uh, he is uh, crucified and he, it resur- he is resurrected. And so within the confines of the gospel of St. Mark, we know that this is this, 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 this son of God, um, it is the, the, the common beginning for all of the other gospels. And it is where we get the word um, gospel from for the rest. Um, it, is, it, is the, it is the primary source. And so there are, there are several um, stories within Mark. And I'm going to ask you to read Mark um, this this month, um, this week. Oh, my goodness. I apologize. This week. And it has um, a couple that I, I think are, are really important. Um, certainly um, these... Uh, these healings, right? We'll see that in chapter three, where he enters the synagogue, and um, whenever there's a healing, there's always this kind of conflict with the religious elite uh, 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 of Judaism, and so it is if he is, it is if Jesus is hiding in plain sight, yet he was tempting and testing, harassing. And, 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 and upsetting the religious authorities. And he does this regularly through this idea that he heals on the Sabbath. And I, I think we talked about this at the very beginning, that um, the reason why the Sabbath was put into Genesis was the, for this understanding that we know we are not automatons, we are not slaves, we, have, we are human beings, and we are called to... Um, to be in the image and likeness of God. That's, you know, that is, you know, the, 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 the purpose behind that creation story in Genesis, you know, which runs counter to a new leash. And at the same time, uh, invites them to rest, renewal, restoration for the Sabbath. Um, but what happens is, um, the religious leaders, um, take the simple words, you know, the, the Sabbath is the day of rest and you must keep it holy. Well, there's no rules on that. There's no regulations. There's no policies. There's no procedures. There's no protocols. Well, how you know how do you rest? How do you make it holy? And so they create an abundance of rules, uh, and, and, you know, to demonstrate or illustrate the rules to illustrate how you're supposed to rest and be holy and, and keep it holy, and that you're supposed to demonstrate as a good person of that faith in what you do. And so Jesus is this. You know this 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 son of man, son of God, who kind of pushed back and said, you know, you know, the Sabbath is made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And so he does these healings, and he does these healings one to, to, to be in conflict and demand that there is um, like a, you know a revolution within within the the religious establishment. He's saying to them, you know, quit giving people a bunch of rules. And so he does this. He 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 tweaks them. He you know he bothers them through these. Um, through these healings. So he picks these specific times. He always gets it in the Sabbath. He always does it so that they're aware that they know about it. He always does it in a way that then brings on a conversation and a question and, and, and really pr- brings up the friction of the story. And so that is a, that is a key. Those are the, the, the key components that I think are most valuable for you to understand as you read uh, through the gospel of St. Mark. Um, I invite you to read through the gospel of St. Mark. There'll be a quiz on it and just be fully aware of those, those components. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, certainly reach out to me and be sure to read the Ehrman section because it really gives you a lot of good, thorough information. All right. I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care now. Bye. Oh, I want to add.